After then all, let's continue our look at Fisher's games in the Herseg Novi Blitz of 1970. The next opponent I'd like to look at is against Victor Korshnoi. For those of you who don't know, um, there's great information on Wiki. He's a professional chess player still, currently the oldest active grandmaster on the tournament circuit. He even played a simul at the recent London Classic uh, at the end of 2011. It's great to see him actively playing and competing at the highest level, still able to beat very, very strong 2700s, modern 2700s. Um, at the time of this game, he was born in 1931, so he was about 40 at the time of this game. Uh, 39. So um, he was born in Leningrad, USSR, and later defected to the Netherlands, residing in Switzerland for many years. Korshner played three matches against Anatoly Karpov, the last two for the World Championship. In 1974, he lost the candidates' final to Karpov, who, who was declared World Champion in 1975, when Bobby Fischer failed to defend his title. Then, after defecting from the Soviet Union in 1976, he won consecutive candidate cycles to qualify for World Championship matches with Karpov in 1978 and 81, losing both. In all, Korshner was a candidate for the World Championship on 10 occasions. So, it's a brilliant player, Korshner. And Fischer played e4 in one of their games. So, it's two games each. And in this game, Cautionary Black played the French defence, which is a great expert on. If you want to study the French defence, the classic players to study would be like Cautionary and Almond, among others. Almond was also, by the way, in this tournament. So anyway, d4, d5. And now Fischer uses the winner variation. He invites the bishop pinning the knight. After e5, instead of the usual c5, which can lead to ultra modern and sharp theoretical, you know, contests with queen in the queen g4 lines after after a3. Uh, instead, actually, a less perhaps less theoretical approach is used. Knight e7. And now Fisher is has the possibility of avoiding double pawns here. From an engine point of view, actually, engines seem to like bishop d2. It's it's not the usual position. But maybe also, you know, other alternatives available. This this is very interesting. A3, without even c5, just playing a3 anyway. It does still strengthen the white center. But after bishop takes c3, b takes. This bishop will take some time if it wants to occupy the diagonal. In a lot of Fisher games, he is playing for a4 and bishop a3 to try and exploit this trump card, this dark squared bishop which black hasn't got a dark my bishop here. c5 now, it's still played, nevertheless, it puts pressure on the white centre. It also liberates the queen, actually, which could be usefully going uh, to squares like a5. And in fact, that's used immediately after a4. Queen a5 is played. So it's inhibiting this bishop a3, causing some technical issues. How to defend c3? Not only that, the Queen's influence generally along this diagonal is interesting to consider uh, later on. If Black's going to put pile pressure on d4, this Queen may be not as misplaced as you might think, even later on. But for the moment, it's causing disruption, because the Bishop, instead of going to its natural diagonal, is going just meekly to defend the c3 pawn. Now, while White has the potential for unveiling the discovered set on the Queen, it's a bit harmless here. And in fact, it's ignored, it's allowed. Knight bc6 from Victor. Now, queen g4, which has less venom than the other lines, because usually there's like a knight f5. But there's also another viable alternative. Black can simply castle here. And it looks as though, well, sometimes this is dangerous, this bishop here, if it's not exchanged off. And there might be some Greek gifts in the offing and stuff like that. But uh, Black is very careful here, as we'll see, to avoid uh, the issue, the tactical issues, while sort of retaining the strategic trump cards, and also increasing a bit the dynamism of the Black position shortly. Because after Knight f3, Black actually plays f6, undermining the pawn chain at its head. is often quite useful to generate some counterplay on the f file, but also for central pawn mobility and trying to get the bishop liberated. Bishop d3. And now this is very, very interesting plan by Victor. 
This is a five minute game and you'd think actually that h4 and bishop h7 might actually be dangerous. Why hasn't castled yet? Because then you might have cheap, relatively cheap tactics and crude, you know, crude but effective tactics might be on the cards. This is all shut down. Any nonsense is shut down now by black. First f5, locking down that diagonal. And now, even worse for that bishop, c4, but it is releasing that central tension playing c4. It is kicking the bishop off the sensitive diagonal though. So black's king safety here looks like iron rock solid, this position here. Bishop h6 might be an issue though, you could consider. But then knight g6 might be adequate for defending, shielding off g7. So Victor here actually makes use of a pin in the position. This pawn is, is virtually pinned actually because this rook's loose at the moment, white hasn't castled. So b5 is played. After castles, Fischer lets pawn go. It's double pawns after all. And it seems as though, in principle, he would have a free hand on the king side, because black, uh, by playing c4, has released a lot of the central tension. So usually in these positions, white has a free hand. But maybe uh, Fischer sensing this um, actually is a little bit maybe over optimistic which causes a bit of incaution here. Uh, this next move seems to be an outright blunder. Uh, there's a weakness of the last move associated with it. I wonder if you can spot it. Fisher played knight g5. So if I tell you there's a weakness associated with the last move here, uh, what could that be? If the knight's gone to g5, what is left potentially undefended or a bit weaker than before? Okay, I wonder if you can spot uh, Victor's next move as black here. Okay, knight takes d4 using yet another pin. This pin on the bishop now, because this bishop is now loose. The knight's no longer protecting it. Now, okay, um, there's no time for any tactic or anything, because knight takes e2 is a pretty serious threat to fault queen and king. So something has to be done about this. So c takes is played, and after queen takes, um, Fisher has already a difficult position. Let's just, just briefly examine from an engine point of view, was he actually worse before knight g5? We'll add a kibitza. Apparently white was okay here. There's, there's actually a two-stage plan which we're about to witness because I've, I've checked this before. That first, to try and get this knight to move back by doubling the rooks on a4. So if the knight moves back, um, well, a4 would drop, um, potentially if it doesn't. So say knight d8. But here, now, in this position, there's opportunities like um, bishop c1, bishop g5. And I think knight g5 is, is what I've seen uh, analyzed before as well, because this carries with it knight takes h7 as a threat and queen h4 check, because that piece would be vulnerable. So um, the shield would be on the other foot here for the weaknesses of the last move. If the pressure's on black and having to do a move like this, loosening e7. But as it was in the game, d2 was loose after knight g5. So that seems to be one of the early blunders in this game where black now seems to have the better position. So queen takes d2, queen h4. It's not that harmful here, h6, just kicking that knight back. Now, after knight f3, kicking the queen, Victor decided he didn't want uh, the queens necessarily on here, and he uses opportunity to get the queens off. If he had played queen takes e2, then queen takes e7. Is possible, but no, Victor uses knight g6, gets the queens off. Queen, uh, so knight takes d2, knight takes h4. Now, with the queens off here, white is regaining uh, a pawn, okay, but still, it is a pawn up for black. Three, four, five, six, seven, three, four, five, six is a pawn up for black. And black still has a very pleasant 
position. After knight g6, there's an annoying threat now of knight f4. There's knight coming into the game. Um, does that have to be? Does something have to be done about it though? Well, white first of all attacks a7, doubles rooks on that a7 pawn, a6, and now actually decides uh, not to waste uh, time, say with g3, just plays knight b1. Okay, if the knight does go to f4, in fact, just bishop f1, it's a bit harmless. So actually, the knight reroutes, it goes to e7, and now. Um, another blunder but in a difficult position I think probably white should try and hold steady the position with c3 strengthening the center and the d4 in particular and yes black has a better position here but maybe it's it's going to be a long time to crunch this to grind uh, white down here black's only better by less than half a pawn technically so you imagine this sort of sequence as, as an example um, where black could use this b-file and would stand better but uh, it's a game in fact bishop d7 is not possible bishop b7 rather to keep hold of that a6 and it's a game only less than half a pawn advantage we're talking about but in the game unfortunately Fisher played rook in this position a bit of a howler it is a five minute game though remember that so Rook a5, there's another weakness of the last move. d4 is an a5, get forked now with knight c6. Oh dear. It's possible that Fisher had used a lot of time already, and this, so it's quite blunderful, uh, this game in particular. Knight c6 just wins that center pawn now, so black is clearly uh, a lot better now. f4 stretching out on the king side now f3 might be a dangerous threat potentially but actually it's ignored for the moment knight c3 and in fact victor's not interested in playing f3 he just goes for now the head of the pawn chain the, the one that's left in the center knight c6 so it's a french defense player's dream position really the center's really collapsed for white um, f4 has meant actually that white cannot support e5 with playing f4 himself so e5 is like dislocated the rooks although coordinated they're not really doing much on either the a file and they can't get to the b file to do much there's not that many entry points of interest so Fisher's passive here he does try and at least get into the d4 square after knight e2 to try and uh, wait for knight e5 to get this knight d4 in so that happens but he's clearly worse here. Losing all these pawns in the center is not very pleasant. So Victor must have been very pleased with his position round about here. After h5, knight c6. And now the center moves forward, liberating French defense bishop. Now after knight c3, rook d8. Okay, Fisher's trying to generate some counterplay. Bishop f3, but it's being shut down quite easily. e4, and then the knight comes powerfully in the center with knight d4. So there's no time for a, a kind of move like knight takes d5 and bishop c4 here, because the knight's immediately threatening e2, so it moves. Now bishop b7, preventing any tactical idea like that. Rook d1, and now again. A very strong uh, move putting pressure on white knight d5 so there's no bishop c4 or anything the knights attacked so in fact here this prompts knight takes e4 which seems to be a very useful tactical move exploiting the pin on the d-pawn okay the problem is in this position after rook c8 the knight's left a bit embarrassed where can it move to it can't move here here, yeah, can't move anywhere because the f4 pawn is also pretty useful. Unfortunately, um, it can. Okay, it's got one move though, the only move, knight d d2. So that leaves c3 vulnerable to a nasty fork. It is a bit of a nightmare for Fisher this game, and it has been said that you know sometimes uh, Fisher's uh, if he had a weakness in his repertoire, um, sometimes he has lost the French defense games. In the past, and, and some people wonder why people didn't use the French defense more against him. 
Okay. So he's losing the exchange here. Ouch. It is a five minute game though, so uh, these things happen to most of us. Bishop b5. So the exchange down c3, getting uh, the bishops off now. Rook b4, trying to still drive these pawns forward. Offering uh, d5 in this position though, uh, to get this a5 in this past rolling a pawn, which the rook can't do anything about because it's holding up protecting d4 at the moment. King e2 now a4, pressure's really being mounted on white. Rook a8, driving, preparing to drive that past a pawn all the way. Rook b1, again the a pawn is now ready to roll. Rook b5, okay, takes now a3. And um, there's no stopping the a pawn here. Fisher gives up the knight, he's, he's a rook down. He could e easily just resign here. And here, um, I think he just resigned or ran out of time. Probably just resigned. Bit of a nightmare game. In fact, this is the only game in this tournament of the Herseg Novi Blitz that Fisher lost. So, congratulations to Victor who, who got victory in this game. <laughs> Victor Korshnoy. So, um, should we take it from Black's point of view? If we flip the board, just just get from Black's point of view of this game. French defense winner. So knight e7 instead of the usual c5 move. Queen g4s here can be answered with knight f5 as well as um, castling potentially. Um, so a3, but uh, perhaps in this position here, you know, queen g4, just trying to transpose back into normal lines. After a4, queen a5, it seems almost a mixture of plans that the bishop did want to go to a3. If the bishop's now going to d2, this, this bishop a3 plan is long delayed. Where is the bishop going to find a comfortable diagonal? Uh, perhaps the idea is just to keep the bishops eyeing uh, the black king if black's going to castle kingside. But uh, Victor sort of sorted this out by just making the highly committal decision soon to play f5 and then c4. So he's guaranteed his king safety and he works on the queen side with b5 winning a pawn which doesn't mean much in itself but actually of more significance are these weaknesses of the last move picked up knight g5 allowing knight takes d4 unfortunately and uh, black's doing very well here now d4 is a bit weaker the queens are now coming off after knight f3 knight g6 And um, this is a bit of a miserable position for White. The A, the coordinated doubled rooks on the A line don't mean too much here. Now this is a bit of a howl of this rook A5. Engine evaluation in this position before rook A5, which makes things a lot worse. It still wasn't that bad. It was it was tenable. If it's less than half a pawn, it was tenable. But rook A5, it goes to like minus 1.6 more than one and a half pawn so this is the howler move of the game unfortunately I think Fisher wanted perhaps to justify his rooks and to use this entry point not really sure um, usually d4 isn't as weak it's usually secured the earlier tactic weakened d4 so uh, unfortunately now it's it's really awful for white it's very difficult um, and then after this f4, this pawn's dislocated, meaning that knight c6 is more effective just to win e5 soon. The whole pawn chain has been destroyed, which uh, pawn chain management is one of the key skills, I think, of a French defence player in many uh, variations. And the pawn chain's certainly been dismantled, and the bishop's soon to be liberated now, once black can get e5 going. So e5, liberating the bishop. A dream position. There's some minor tactics uh, to resolve here. So after bishop b7, rook d1, and they're resolved elegantly with this next move, offering a pawn knight b5 to leave the knight uh, not protecting c3, which is embarrassing here after rook c8. So now losing basically the exchange, winning that centre pawn but losing the exchange, 
Ouch. And now um, another sort of horrendous positional sacrifice gift, uh, leaving White even more uh, struggling in this position to get this very, very mighty, dangerous past a pawn going with full speed, basically. So Fisher is helpless here against this a pawn. So having to give up the knight just to rook down. So not the best game uh, for Fisher in this tournament, but in fact, it's his only loss in the tournament. Uh, he dominated this blitz event, but um, you know I think there are some instructive points uh, for the French defence player, the winner player, the tricky knight e7 instead of the, the bog standard c5. Some other points later relating to the value of the queen a5, which some might think is a misplaced queen, but it's actually quite dangerous there. Comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.